Howdy folks, I have a problem, and that problem is one that a lot of you probably deal with as well. In fact, I don't really know many people that don't deal with this problem, and the problem is is that I have a lot of things I want to do. I have a lot of things that I need to do. I have a lot of things that I like to do, and I don't have enough time to do it. In fact, this is how I wanted to start out this video. I'm out here in beautiful... Rocky Mountains of good old USA, and I'm actually out mountain biking, and I'm about five miles deep into the forest. I've stopped here on this bridge, and I think this is a good time for me to speak to all of you. Yeah, as it turns out, it's not really a good idea to uh, record a video on a windy day standing on top of a stream that is experiencing the spring runoff and out here in the Rocky Mountains you can imagine that that runoff can be uh, well you heard it for yourself it's not necessarily uh, the most appealing to the ear the reality is I actually really like getting outdoors. I like getting my exercise. I think that actually, uh, you know, those sounds are fantastic. They just don't sound great um, on video or, you know, through audio when I'm making a video about neutron stars, which is probably why you are here uh, uh, watching this video right now. To make a very long story short, I solved this problem for myself uh, quite a while ago uh, when I started working on an independent project that I was doing, uh, studying neutron stars through uh, the lens of, uh, well, really t doing timing analysis. I ended up writing some closed source code uh, that allowed me the ability to retrieve and reduce nicer data in a standardized, uh, you know, just very default and simple data reduction procedure completely autonomously. And a while back, I recognized that this is something that a lot of you could really benefit from. So I cut out uh, or copied out a lot of that code, changed it around a little bit, and actually uh, developed a bit of free and open source code that will allow you to do all of this. Now, just to show you how powerful and useful this code can be before we actually get into it, I have my file explorer open right here, and I have two of my uh, backup drives right in here, Bade and Zwicky. I, I just realized how much of a nerd I, I, I sound like right now. But anyways, um, you can see here in Zwicky, I have all different kinds of sources. I have the Crab Pulsar right here in the full data sense. You can see I have a whole bunch of different stuff. If we go into nicer, though, you can see I have uh, series one, two, three, four, which should really be cycle one, two, three, and four. And here in cycle one, we have all the cycle one observations, cycle two, plenty of those, cycle three, plenty of those there. Um, you know, we can go all the way back. I have the Vela Pulsar. There's a lot more data here. Here's all the cycle one data. I have it all. I re retrieved it all, reduced it all. Uh, cycle two is a very similar picture. You hopefully get the point. I am not going to sit around uh, and wait for all of that data to be retrieved and go through and sit down and just do a, a, a default data reduction procedure. The independent work that I do, uh, you know, is a project that really is something that's done en masse, meaning I'm going through a very high volume of data and I needed some kind of pipeline to do all of that. But you can see the utility and, and really the advantage that this all has. And so this is going to be a bit of a longer video as I'm going to discuss all the different odds and ends of this software. It's going to be the introductory video to this software. So there are going to be timestamps in the description down below for you to go ahead and see all the different things that you might be interested in looking at. And any new updates uh, or, or changes to this will either be done in pinned comments in the comment section, or I'll just make a separate video with the updates going on, which I think will be more likely the case than doing a lot of pinned comments unless there's something really small or tiny. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns throughout the process of this video, don't hesitate to ask as we go along. Let's get started. So, folks, here is the GitHub repository that will be linked in the description down below. You can see that uh, this is licensed under Apache 2.0, so it's completely free and open source for you to use. Let's talk about the prerequisite software that's required. 
you are going to need Hesoft version 6.30.1, but I've tested this and it works with Hesoft version 6.29C. Hesoft version 6.30 kind of works, but you're not going to be able to do Barry Center corrections because there's an issue with Barry Core or HXD Barry, I believe. I can't remember what it was, but it's recommended that you use Hesoft version 6.30.1 in a local installation. You'll need remote CalDB or, you know, some way of getting the, cal the necessary calibration files. You'll also need to use WGET. Additionally, I have only tested this code on Debian based distributions of Linux. So those of you using the Fedora distributions or the Arch distributions or even Mac operating systems, I'll encourage you to try this out for yourself. I imagine it will work, but if you encounter any issues, please let me know and I will work on uh, getting fixes up for any of those. Now, AutoNicer is a Python package, and although in its current state it only kind of partially works as a Python package, you can import it and start messing with it and doing things in Python, although I'm not going to highlight that functionality in this video just yet. You can go ahead and you can install it with pip, and I recommend doing it just on a local installation, not in any virtual environment, just on your local machine. Uh, pip3 install auto nicer. And you can see that I've already kind of gone through and installed it. You can see it went ahead and installed, but it didn't really retrieve anything new. Um, but yes, you can go ahead and do it. It's on version 1.0.2 because I'm considering uh, the, the closed source version, kind of version 0. Now, AutoNicer is designed to work a lot with this particular page right here. This is the Hesarc archive uh, browser or search. And since I've done a lot of work with the Crab Pulsar, we're going to look up the Crab Pulsar. We can navigate our way to the nicer master catalog. And from here, we have kind of everything that we're going to need uh, to use in a moment. Back here in our terminal, I'm just going to navigate to the directory that I want my nicer data uh, retrieved to and that I want it reduced in. So we're going to make dir auto nicer demo, and then we'll just navigate our way into it. From here, we can make sure Hesoft is initiated. And then we can run AutoNicer by simply just typing in the command AutoNicer. Now AutoNicer will fire up and you will see it says AutoNicer. And it will prompt you for the target, the same exact target that you put in here in the uh, archive. You can see it's the Crab Pulsar. In reality, you could type in the actual Pulsar name. But Crab Pulsar is just such a more smooth name. It rolls off the tongue so much easier rather than PSRB0531 plus 21. Uh, no, 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 no. Crab Pulsar is fine. But the same exact thing that you typed in uh, at Hesark, you're going to want to type in here. So we're going to type in Crab Pulsar. Then you're going to be prompted with three things that are going to be like predefined settings for everything you want. Do you want to apply a Barry Center correction to the data that you are going to retrieve and reduce? Well, I do a lot of timing work, so by default it is set to yes, but you could type in yes or no, and a Barry Center correction will happen one way or the other. So we're going to hit yes. We can choose to write an output log. I will demonstrate that in a moment. But for the time being, we can go ahead and we can just type in yes as well. We can also compress all of the XTI files in a tar GZ format. This will be all the uh, XTI files except for either the Barry Center corrected MPU7 cleaned event file or the non Barry Center corrected MPU cleaned event file, depending on what you selected for this first setting. Because I want to demonstrate the TarGZ compression to you, we're going to select yes, and we can just enter right through that. You can add to an existing log, or you can create a new one. We're just going to create a new one, and it's going to come out in this directory. And again, I'll touch on that more after we run all of this. So I'm just going to type in new, and then we're going to name it, and I'm just going to call this demo uh, because it's going to come out in a, it, it, because this is a demo, and it's going to come out in a CSV format, so just don't include .csv at the end. Now you're going to see this AutoNicer prompt right here, and now we can actually start doing some fun stuff with AutoNicer. By fun stuff, I mean selecting the observations that we want retrieved and reduced. 
Back over here in the archive, the first thing I should mention is that because this follows a very default and standardized data reduction procedure, any observations with zero seconds of exposure time will automatically be kicked out. So you're not going to be able to retrieve or reduce any of these uh, observations. But let's say that we want a short one like this one right here. It's only 47 seconds and I don't want to be dealing with, a, a, you know, reducing a lot of this. So we can go ahead, we can copy that observation ID, paste it into our prompt, and hit enter. You will see it tells you adding, you know, whatever that observation ID is, and we can type in cell to see which observations we have selected to be retrieved and reduced. We can go ahead and start adding a few more of these. Let's say that we want, oh, I don't know, this other uh, cycle three uh, observation. We can just go ahead, paste and it'll add that, we can type in cell again, and now you can see that we have two observations selected. If we messed up with selecting something, we can go ahead and type in the command back, and it will say that it's removing the most recent entry that you put in. If we type in cell again, you will see that that original one is there, but we want to add that one back in. So we can go ahead and we can type and re-add that. Type in cell, and there are our observations that have been selected. Now, if we don't want any of these, the one thing that we can do is we can type in the command rm all and then cell, and we see that there are no observations selected. We have removed everything. If you don't want to run AutoNicer at all, you can go ahead and you can just type in the command exit and everything will close out, but we're not doing that just yet because I'm doing a demonstration here. This is where AutoNicer is pretty powerful, but also could lead to some big problems for you if you don't have enough disk space. So make sure you're running AutoNicer somewhere where you know you have enough disk space. We can do something like this, and let's say we want all of the cycle 3 uh, observational data. Well, we can just type in cycle 3, hit enter, and then with cell, you can see we have selected and uh, queried up or queued up all of the cycle 3 data sets of the crab pulsar with just one simple command right here. Now, again, this is where that rm all command comes in, because obviously right now I don't want to do all of that. We'd be sitting here for a very long time in this video. But let's say that I, you know, don't want one of these in particular. I can come here and I can copy, uh, you know, let's say this one, this uh, 301-301-0111 observation. We can type in rm, and then we can follow that with the observation id and then we can type in cell and you can see that it has been removed from what we had before you can see we had uh, this one one three oh one three oh one oh one 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 observation id selected and then down here you can see that it is non-existent but again obviously i don't want to go through all these so we can type in rm all and everything will be removed we can type in cell you can see there's nothing there now actually i wanted to highlight this because we can go ahead and we can also type in you know like cycle uh one and uh, cell, and you can see there are many, many more uh, observation IDs. Uh, and you, so again, you can run into some serious trouble, especially if you're looking at a source like the Crab Pulsar that has very, very many counts, and these data sets can get very, very large. Again, I have gone through all of them. I've retrieved them, I've reduced them, I've done other analysis on them. They are very large, so just bear that in mind. You need to have enough disk space if you're going to use AutoNicer. We're going to RM all again and i'm just going to go ahead and add in two uh, i'm just going to add in two observation ids here all right so we have these two observation ids selected these two observations from cycle three and what we can go ahead and do once we want everything retrieved and reduced is we can just type in one command done done basically means hey i'm done selecting all my settings i'm done selecting all my uh, you know, the observations that I want to be retrieved and that I want to be reduced. You will see that it starts firing up and wget starts retrieving everything. It'll start by telling you that we're retrieving the XTI data. Bear in mind, the MPU7 cleaned event files and the UFA files can be quite large, so this will take a moment. Now, while this is downloading, I will say that this is limited based upon your bandwidth. And so if you have very, very slow bandwidth, uh, things are not going to go particularly well. I am sitting uh, 
off of Wi-Fi, not on uh, Ethernet, so I'm not getting the best uh, performance here, but we'll just let that run and uh, you'll see what happens in a moment. Now you can see it go right into Nicer L2. You can see the Berry Center correction is running. And now the Tar GZ compression starts, and we are compressing all of the UFA event files. And also the MPU7 cleaned event file that is not Berry Center corrected. The Berry Center corrected event file is denoted with this BC prefix replacing the NI. And since we're doing the since we opted for the Berry Center correction, that is the, going to be the only event file that is not compressed. Once that's done, you can see AutoNicer has moved on to retrieving the next data set that is going to be automatically reduced once it's fully retrieved. AutoNicer retrieves and reduces observations in series. Now, while that second data set is reducing, let's go over the different commands that are being run here in what I consider a uh, default or generalized uh, or standardized data reduction procedure. First, we put it through nicer L2 with indir equals the path to our input directory and clobber equals yes. If you don't opt for the Barry Center correction or the TarGZ compression, this is the only command you really need to worry about. If you opt for the Barry Center correction, the Barry Center correction is performed with the input file being the path to the MPU7 cleaned event file. The output file is in the XTI directory as well with the prefix BC at the very beginning. The orbit files are the orbit files that are located in the auxil directory of the retrieved data set. The reference frame is set to ICRS. The right ascension and declination are set to be the right ascension and declination here in the archive and it is in the required decimal format. And lastly, the ephemeris is set to the JPLEH430 ephemeris. Again, if you opt for the tar GZ compression, you will see all of the UFA files compressed at the very minimum. You will also see the MPU7 cleaned event file compressed into a tar GZ format if you opt for the Berry Center correction. AutoNicer has run for both of these observations. Let's do a quick summary of everything that happened here. We retrieved the XTI data. The log and the auxil data ran that through Nicer L2 put it through the Berry Center correction since we opted for that, and so everything then was uh, compressed in a tar -GZ format, including the MPU7 cleaned event file. Then we moved on to the second observation, downloaded all the XTI log and auxil data, ran that through Nicer L2, applied the Berry Center correction, and compressed everything. You can see here in the file explorer, all we have are these two directories, which are containing our retrieved and reduced data here in the XTI directory. You can see we have the Barry Center corrected MPU7 cleaned event file with everything else compressed in the tar GZ format. We also have the other observation and just like that. Now you will recall that right here we opted to write an output log. What that is going to do is it's going to give you this kind of a CSV file right here if we open that up. And you can see here we have a CSV file with just the input and the name. The input is going to be the path to the Barry Center corrected MPU7 cleaned event file if you opted for that. Otherwise, it will just be the non Barry Center corrected MPU7 cleaned event file. And then in the second column, you will have the observation ID with a capital NI instead of a lowercase just to denote that this is something that uh, you know, you're doing on your own. There's some other reasons why those are capitals, but um, generally speaking, any of the stuff that I produce on my own uh, through like a manual data reduction has this capital NI, and um, you know, this is something that's just there so that you can call the uh, observation ID. In reality, this demo, C this CSV output is really just a receipt for your auto for running auto nicer as you could potentially pull down 
all of the data for a source like the Crab Pulsar, and you'd want to make sure that you know exactly where everything is, and because there's going to be a lot of it there. Now, let's talk about contributing. This is free and open source software after all, and ultimately, a lot of this is tailored to my use cases. I've kind of just rewritten it in a little way for you guys to be able to use it. Now, one of the things that I am working on doing is getting this so that you can start calling it in uh, Python itself. I know there's uh, Hesoft Pi that will allow you to call a lot of this stuff, but this is something that I developed more for my own use case, but I think there's plenty of you that could use it as well, uh, depending on what it is that you're trying to do. The most useful way for you to contribute is to come over here to this issues tab and start to file issues with it. Just go and type in and go to new issue and then leave a title and a detailed comment so that I know exactly what's going wrong here. As you can see, I already have three issues that I want to do. Two of these are enhancements, which we'll talk about some of the things that I want to do in the future. You can kind of get a hint of where they are right now, but right now this is not up to date with AstroPy version 5.1, so I hope to bring it up to date with that with future versions. If you want to contribute any code, all I'll ask is that you go ahead and you submit a pull request. I'm a big fan of submitting a pull request to uh, a different branch other than the master branch and then merging that into master once there's been a number of changes all done to that, so I'll get something set up for that, but all I'll ask is that you go ahead and submit a pull request and leave as much information as possible and maybe even some contact info so maybe I can get involved and we can start collaborating and start working together on this and developing something kind of cool. Now, as far as things go in the future, I want to kind of make this something that a lot of you can start using for different use cases. One of the things that I would like to do is I would like to set up the ability for you to generate standard products, such as the products necessary for you to do spectrum analysis, which is your ARF, your RMF files, uh, your spectrum files themselves so that, you know, that you can go ahead and do within XSelect. In fact, uh, some of the work I did before automated uh, the procedure of going through and extracting spectrums with XSelect. So that's something that I can add in, uh, you know, probably in an afternoon without, you know, too much difficulty. But also, I want to go ahead and add in the ability for you to reprocess data uh, that you already have existing uh, on your machine with the latest calibrations as they come out because there are going to be new calibrations that come out and I do realize that there is going to be a little bit of uh, some issues with that tar -GZ compression so that I have a number of ideas of how I want to go about doing that obviously I also want to make sure that this is working with all the different operating systems you want to use with the exception of Windows because I currently don't know of a way that you can run Hesoft on Windows and even if you can um, Dealing with Windows just from a development standpoint is always a nightmare, so I'm just going to leave this to, uh, you know, Linux and Mac OS. Uh, I don't have, uh, you know, a Mac machine to test this on. Uh, I run pretty strictly uh, Debian-based distributions of Linux, so if you're using a different distribution of Linux, please test it and let me know, uh, you know, with the uh, issues or anything else that's going on by submitting an issue ticket or anything else. Now again, this is a Python package. Um, we can work on something also to get this uh, really easily scriptable, uh, you know, so you can just import it and start using it. In reality, this is not a whole lot of code. If you happen to look at the source code, uh, the autonicer.py file is only 271 lines of code. Now, in terms of contributing, again, the issues are probably the best thing for you know to help me out with contributing to this. If you find any issues, if you find any problems, or if you have any enhancements that you would like to see to this code, I would really appreciate it if you would go ahead and just submit a ticket. Now, one thing that you may notice is that with the Pi tests that I have running, that it's testing this code, I'm not getting full coverage, and a big part of that is actually that I do not want any nicer data being retrieved and reduced on GitHub's backend because that's just going to lead to, uh, you know, a very, very long testing time. And so I'm testing kind of everything except for the retrieval and the reduction. So if you know a very, very quick or easy way of doing that, uh, you know, that might be something that, you know, I, I know immediately I don't have a good solution to right now.
again, lastly, I want to talk about uh, the inspiration for all of this. The first is that, um, you know, astronomy and astrophysics is actually very hard now. I'm an independent researcher, uh, and I, I'm doing my own independent projects. And obviously, there isn't a whole lot of uh, support, especially for uh, independence, so to speak. Now, luckily, I happen to start doing a lot of research and things like that in a university setting, and I'm just carrying on doing that now because I loved it so much that, like, again, just like me mountain biking out in, in the forest, it's something that, you know, I, I really enjoy and I recognize and realize I can just do in my spare time at home. But one of the things that I really uh, love is the ability to go out and do other things and automate stuff. I love automating things that's what you know computer code is here for us to you know to use it for um is to help us out with automating things and to solve problems and things like that i hope that uh, if you do happen to use autonicer it does give you a little bit more free time on your own end now there are some additional motivations for some of the new improvements that uh, i want to add but as i make those improvements i will make videos like this where i describe the different changes that are going on and show you the motivations for those changes as we get there if you have any questions comments or concerns and if you happen to try out auto nicer let me know in the comment section down below here or over you know find a way to reach out to me through github if you want to do that as well I want to thank you all very much for watching, and uh, I hope, again, I really hope that this saves you a little bit of time um, so that you're not sitting here reducing one observation after the next after the next. Now, obviously, if you're, uh, you know, you know, re doing really rigorous uh, research and you're not analyzing stuff and mass like I am, you might be wanting to do more of a detailed data reduction, but we can talk about, uh, you know, ways of even getting that added into the code in future versions. Again, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again next time.